PC Electronics. In today's video, we are going to explore the job opportunities for electronics engineers. In my opinion, the electronics related branches has a lot of job opportunities, whether it is government sector or private sectors like the core companies of electronics, also IT sectors and teaching jobs. Okay, so there is actually a wide variety of job opportunities for all the electronics related branches. So we are going to explore what are the possibilities and which are the organizations which you can try after electronics engineering. Means this video is specially for the people from EC, Triple E and EI branches. Okay, so uh, in this video, I'm going to share with you about what are the government organizations that you can try after your electronics engineering degree means as a fresher and what are the requirements? What is the selection process? Also, we'll be discussing about what are the core companies of electronics and IT companies and what are the possibilities of doing teaching jobs. Okay, so all these things we'll be discussing in today's video. If you are interested, please do watch this video till the end. Also, if you are seeing the channel for the first time, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow us on our Instagram page. So first, let us see which are the government organizations that you can try if you are from EC, Triple E and EI branches. Okay. So the first organization name that I am going to share with you is ISRO. It is actually one of the highly paid uh, jobs in India and it is one of the reputed uh, government organizations which anybody can uh, work with uh, and they are having a lot of allowances also if you are actually getting you know placed in ISRO as a scientist. So the category uh, to which you are going to uh, get post is SC scientist engineer SC is the uh, category or the post for which they hire B beta candidates. Okay, minimum you should be having 70 percentage and above. If you are having uh, 85 percentage or uh, 90 percentage above, then uh, there is actually high chances of getting shortlisted. Okay, so the selection process consists of there will be a written test and then there will be technical interview and HR interview. That is going to be the general selection process. Generally, they don't ask for gate scores uh, till the recruitment, uh, that is till the latest recruitments. They have not asked for gate scores as such so they uh, actually select through these stages of selection the first stage is a uh, written test then there will be technical interviews and face to face hr interviews can be there okay so uh, test plus interview that is the selection process uh, you can actually expect a salary above 50000 or 55000 from the beginning okay so that will be the initial pay uh, plus allowances that is going to be the pay scale okay so it is actually a very good organization to start with or it is actually a dream organization for all these engineers. Okay, so uh, you can either join after BB Tech or if you are having MEM Tech directly, sometimes they, you know, conduct the technical interviews without the test itself. Uh, through the technical interviews, they will hire if you are having masters. Okay, so the bachelor uh, degrees will have the test plus interview. For the master, sometimes there won't be test, sometimes there will be test also. Okay, it depends on the, uh, the organization's uh, decision. Okay, so that is the first organization which is ISRO. After that, there is DRDO. DRDO is Defense Research and Development Organization. Again, they are following the same pattern of selection, test plus interview. Okay, so that is again a highly paid government organization of India. Again, it is a very reputed organization. Uh, so, that is the second organization which is DRDO. The third uh, organization is uh, BARC, that is Baba Atomic Research Center, which again comes in the same category of ISRO, DRDO, that category. So, again, they are following the same uh, selection pattern, test plus interview. Sometimes they will be asking for gate score, but mostly the selection process consists of uh, test plus interview, provided that you should be having uh, CGPA about 7.5 or 7 okay minimum if you are having 7.5 or 7 only then you need to apply to these organizations because otherwise you won't be actually getting shortlisted to the you know uh, selection process okay the next organization is Indian Air Force and the uh, selection test for this uh, Indian Air Force is called AFCAT Air Force Common Admission Test and they actually follow actually a specific uh, pattern of selection process there will be an initial test which is called AFCAT itself. It is a uh, it is a test which consists of questions from aptitude area, language related questions. Uh, so that is the first step, first stage of selection. And then after that, there is a 
technical related test means uh, there will be questions from your respective discipline only okay and this is called EKT which is engineering knowledge test okay actually I have done a separate video on this uh, AFCAD selection process itself I'll be linking that in description box and also we have done a lot of uh, preparation videos of AFCAD EKT electronics okay so that is the uh, next organization which is Air Force itself it is a highly paid organization and again a lot of people want to work with Indian Air Force and they are interested in cracking the AFCAD okay so that is the next one which is AFCAD the next set of government organizations are NPCIL BEL that is Bharat Electronics Limited, Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited, then Gas Authority of India Limited, Steel Corporation of India Limited. These are a set of organizations which are government organizations itself which look for people from electronics background and here what happens is there can be two categories of selection. There can be uh, recruitments for people on contract basis and also permanent jobs. Okay, For the contract basis especially for Bharat Electronics Limited that is BEL a lot of recruitments will come for uh, contract based engineers and they uh, the post names will be trainee engineers project engineers this will be the post names okay and the selection process is quite simple actually it mainly depends on your uh, academic score and also they will be conducting a video conferencing based uh, interview okay so that is the only selection process that is a video conferencing based interview and this will be for contract basis the contract will be for three years or four years and depend it depends okay and if it is for a permanent uh, job role means if it is a full-time job means uh, there they can sometimes ask for gate score okay there can be also recruitments uh, without gate score and in that case there will be test plus interview okay so that is a selection process for these set of organizations which are Bharat Electronics Limited Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited, Gas Authority of India, India Limited and Steel Authority of India Limited. Okay, so these organizations they recruit people from electronics background can be for contract basis post or it can be for a full time or a permanent job. Okay, so any of this uh, job role you can try for. The next set of organizations is IOCL, ONGC and BSNL. So they generally ask for a compulsory uh, gate score means the the gate score is a must okay so and also they recruit people based on uh, the nearest dates of this gate examinations so you have to actually apply for this uh, recruitment post and you have to give the gate test if you get a good score in the gate test only then you actually uh, get shortlisted for this selection process that is the uh, criteria so for these organizations like ONGC, IOCL, BSNL, generally they recruit people only through gate examinations. Okay. Otherwise, uh, there can be some contract based job also, but mostly they look for people with valid gate score. Okay. So these are some of the government organizations which you can try for. As I've told you, generally uh, these or government organizations, they look for valid gate score. Otherwise, uh, especially for ISRO and all, since I have read a lot of notifications, I can uh, thoroughly say that the recruitments are also happening without gate score but provided that you need to uh, crack their their test okay they themselves conduct a test they don't depend on the gate score they themselves conduct a specific pattern of uh, test and you have to get shortlisted in that test okay so that is the selection process for these government organizations okay and other than this again there is uh, electronics corporation of india limited national informatics center again a lot of other organizations are there that is government organizations are there but the most predominant or the most famous ones these are okay uh, again uh, if you are interested in doing one year apprentice trainings in these government organizations then it is possible as a fresher okay as a fresher it is not really you know easy to get into the government organizations but if you are interested in doing one year training apprentice training then it is possible through the MHRD NATS portal okay so most of this freshers or this uh, graduates will be knowing about these apprentice trainings so they mainly look for people from 2018 to 2020 year of pass outs and also sometimes 2021 that is final years okay so this uh, category of people can do apprentice trainings in these government organization it is actually an initiative by government of India to give apprentice trainings to this 
freshers. Okay. So if you're interested in doing this one year apprentice trainings with a stipend of a uh, stipend which is starting from 8,000 to 10,000, it can depend. Okay. Uh, it is possible. Okay. So again, I, I just wanted to give this information. Uh, in the previous year, also all these organizations, all the organizations has actually called for apprentice and uh, in the near future also they will be calling. All the organizations will be calling and when this uh, notifications will be out, I uh, will be putting videos. Okay, separate videos I will be putting for the apprentice recruitments of these organizations. Okay, so uh, that is again a possibility. If you are interested in doing apprentice trainings, that is there is again, it is possible. Okay. So these are the government organizations which this electronics candidates can try for. Now, other than this government organizations, there is actually a lot of private core companies which the uh, electronics people specifically can try for. Let us have a look on this private core companies. Next, let us have a look on what are the core companies of electronics means the non-IT companies uh, in which the electronics engineers can try for. Okay. So mainly the companies are Intel, Dell, Qualcomm, Broadcom or some consumer electronics related companies like Nokia, Samsung, then uh, various companies are actually there. Siemens is there, then uh, Micro Semi, National Instruments. Uh, these are the main companies. Okay. And the most uh, predominant one or the most famous or highly paying companies are Intel, Dell and Qualcomm. Also, if you are interested in working in the networking related area, you can try for Cisco. Qualcomm is more related on embedded systems and uh, wireless technologies. Uh, Intel is, you know, they are uh, dependent or they are actually more specific on uh, processor design, processor development and all. Dell is a manufacturer of laptops, uh, computers and all. So these are the main areas in which uh, electronics people can try for. And even though you don't require a IT related or a coding related knowledge, there are certain uh, areas or certain domains which you should be having at least basic knowledge to apply to these companies. Okay. And that are mainly embedded systems, artificial intelligence, machine learning, either these related knowledge or some, you know, uh, also language related knowledge, uh, knowledge like VHDL, Verilog or some companies will be based on MATLAB or lab lab is mainly for national instruments okay so based on whichever area the company is belonging to that will be the uh, specific role or requirements okay so if you are interested in working with embedded related uh, area or if you are a person who is interested in embedded system then you if you want to work in that area you can try for qualcomm or you can try for intel this area of these companies or if you are interested in networking you can try for Cisco okay or if you are interested in processor design and all you can try for Intel okay so these are main uh, companies which the electronic branches can try for these are the core companies okay other than that there is IT companies all the IT companies whenever you see a notification on IT company recruitment they mainly call uh, for people from IT computer science or circuital branches circuital branches means EC triple EI now, why this uh, electronics candidates can also join IT companies because in the curriculum of electronics or in this uh, engineering syllabus, the basic coding languages are included. So all the electronics related branches, that is EEEI, they also study the coding, that is C programming basics, right? So as electronics engineers, this is a big advantage that we can join IT company, we can also join core company, okay, and on top of that, we can join a government organization also if you are interested, okay. So, these electronics candidates can all, all these candidates, that is easy to play EI, all the candidates can try for the IT companies also, that is Wipro or TCS or Infosys or all the big companies, provided that you need to have some aptitude skills and some basic coding skills, okay. So, uh, that is again a big advantage. So as electronics engineers, we can either go for government sectors or private core companies or even IT companies. Okay. So these are actually a wide variety of opportunities for all the electronics people. Other than that, if you are a person who is specifically interested in teaching jobs only, you can go for that. Now, the teaching jobs uh, mainly require masters. Okay. Nowadays, because a lot of people uh, are having bachelor's degree. That is simple graduation most of the people are having the teaching jobs require 
masters minimum minimum masters if you want to try for some uh, government uh, colleges then you need to have phd that is a must phd with experience also some uh, organ uh, sorry some institutions are asking for and again some institutions are asking for valid gate or net score okay so these are the requirements for teaching jobs masters is compulsory if you are interested in teaching jobs okay if you are directly uh, that is if you are only interested in teaching jobs i would suggest you after your bb tech directly you can join your masters because without master no uh, none of the private self financing colleges also will hire you okay so masters is a minimum requirement okay so these are the various uh, possibilities for electronics graduates so with this video my aim of actually making this video was lot of people actually comment about the job opportunities what can i do what uh, i have this person this much of percentage what can i do after my uh, you know my graduation uh, what are the possibilities a lot of people do ask in the mails and also ask in the comment session so uh, through this video i just wanted to share whatever information i gathered Uh, with these two three years, uh, after doing a lot of research works in this area, and also after reading a lot of you know job notifications, I could gather all these informations uh, about the job opportunities. Okay, and uh, again, if you go to Google and you know search about the job opportunities, you can get a lot of other informations also. So, uh, especially as electronics people or electronics graduate, there is actually a wide variety of job opportunities. we are not really you know specific uh, to one one thing we can actually have a wide variety of openings there is opening in government uh, institutions or government organizations in private companies if you are interested you can go in it you can go in teaching field or research field means phd or you know you can join as junior research fellow and all okay so there is actually a wide variety of opportunities you just need to explore them so this was the aim of this video i just wanted to share uh, whatever informations i have or i have gathered i just wanted to share with you okay so uh, that's all for today's video okay so i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please make sure you subscribe to the channel you share the videos with your friends and please promote the channel in your friends groups also okay so uh, that's all for today's video that's it thanks for watching keep supporting keep on watching